a surprising amount of houses have no words depicted in any of the books. Obviously some will come with more publications, but nothing for the big players like the Danes, Blackwoods, Freys, Reeds, Blackfires, or even Manderleys. But there are a ton of fun ones mixed in with the generic prideful boasts or threats. The thematic ones that match the family is what I'll try and focus on. Going into this topic, I wasn't entirely sure which kingdom would have the most house words. Well, so far, if you were thinking the Reach, you'd be right. This place is like the classical fantasy region with chivalrous knights and lavish castles. But the amount of attention the author Martin puts into this niche varies massively. There's only eight for the houses in the north, everyone's favorite kingdom. We all know the Starks. It's brought up more than the Targaryens. Winter is coming. I know it. Winter is coming reads straightforward enough, but you can argue there are multiple meanings behind the phrase. Winter is coming and fire and blood are the two house words that seem like Martin put the most thought behind. Double, even triple meanings. Starks were once called the Kings of Winter before the Targaryens conquered Westeros. And back then, like all other ancient kings, they were conquerors. They went after other houses in the north, sometimes driving them into extinction. Winter is coming could be seen as a threat to intimidate the competition. Prideful boasts are the norm for house words. That doesn't fit the theme of the Starks though. Winter is coming is their way of saying, prepare for the bad. You can gather that from the first time it was said in the books. The quote was easy enough to find. Second chapter of the first book. Catelyn approaches her husband Ned Stark. Where are the children? He would always ask her that. In the kitchen arguing about names for their wolf pups. Arya is already in love, and Sansa is charmed and gracious, but Rickon is not quite sure. Is he afraid, Ned asked. A little, she admitted. He's only three. Ned frowned. He must learn to face his fears. He will not be three forever, and winter is coming. Yes, Catelyn agreed. The words gave her a chill as they always did. The stark words. Every noble house had its words. Family mottos, touchstones, prayers of sorts. They boasted of honor and glory, promised loyalty and truth, swore faith and courage. All but the Starks. Winter is coming, said the Stark words. Not for the first time. She reflected on what a strange people these northerners were. That phrase had this infectious way of getting others in the north to start saying it too. The warning has multiple applications, but it's a warning for something the Stark leaders understand. Brutal winters plague the north. No one knows how long these fantastical winters will last, but a long summer indicates a very bad winter that will go on for years. The Starks emerged at the end of the long night, a generation-long winter where the White Walkers first appeared 8,000 years back. And where do they originate from? The lands of always winter that's beyond the wall. A wall the first Stark built, with help of course. Three other noble families in the north have interesting house words. Houses Karstark, Mormont, and Bolton. So the Karstarks, if you couldn't tell by their name, are a branch family of the Starks, founded by a younger son. A fun play on words, with the son and being a son. Though they currently don't have the best relations with the main branch Starks. House Bolton, the North's resident villains, made their words, Our blades are sharp. A simple statement created to be a reminder of their nasty habit of skinning enemies alive. And throughout the millennia, enemies meant their rival kings in the North, the Starks. So I'm sure they don't appreciate these house words. The Mormons, loyal friends and bannermen to the Starks, have the words, here we stand. Mormons historically have had to deal with tons of ironborn raids to the point where even the women have become fighters, defending their home called Bear Island. Always defending their humble home is a good reason to say, here we stand. The four others mentioned in this kingdom with house words are the generic stuff. Honed and ready, ever vigilant, righteous in wrath, proud and free. See, generic. I would expect to see the Manderleys, maybe even the Dustins and Umbers, get their own in the Winds of Winter. I mean, the book is titled The Winds of Winter. It's the North's time to shine. How sigils and words were formed to the Targaryens when they migrated to Westeros from their motherland, Valyria. Aegon the Conqueror created a family sigil for them. He likely chose the words fire and blood as well. It's what made the Targaryens so powerful compared to the common man. Fire and blood magic. It's also a very real threat. That's all that'll remain if they set their dragons on you. The Targaryens themselves no longer understand their magical bond to dragons. That knowledge is long lost for now. The books just hint at it being related to fire and blood magic. The Targaryens' closest allies in the Seven Kingdoms, House of Valerion, migrated to Westeros from Valyria long before the Targaryens. Their house words, the old, the true, the brave, 
makes sense to remind everyone they were in the Crown Lands first. No mention of the seas or sailing though, which is what they're known for. Targaryens ruled the skies on their dragons, and their allies the Valerions ruled the seas with their powerful fleet. There really isn't much else going on in the Crown Lands. There's King's Landing, a relatively new city created by Aegon, and then everything else, completely overshadowed. Martin still found the time to make house words for House Buckwell, Fullard, Stockworth, and Windwater. There's not much going on in the Crownlands because it's a makeshift kingdom, with land taken from the Stormlands to give the Targaryens a place of their own. No real ancient lore behind it. The Stormlanders couldn't really complain because that would just lead to more fire and blood. Plus the new ruler of the kingdom was a Targaryen bastard, Lord Oris Baratheon, who took out the last Storm King. He took the Storm King's castle, daughter, sigil, and even house words. Ours is the Fury, and Fury describes the Baratheons well. Many prominent members of this family were short-tempered and quick to pick up a weapon. The Stormlands have always had a heavy martial culture, but the two houses, with fun house words, are kind of poetic and not so violent. The tough guys over at House Karen brag about how often they enter a battlefield, but are more known for their singers. Their sigil has a songbird called a nightingale, and their words are no song so sweet. House Lawnmouth has a pattern of skulls and kisses on their sigil, and their house words are the choice is yours. That's why Sir Joffrey Lawnmouth in House of the Dragon was called the Knight of Kisses. Definitely not because he liked to kiss Lenor. Here's a remainder of the braggadocious house words from the Stormlands. The Vale, where Ned Stark and Robert Baratheon grew up together as foster brothers, are all about high altitude mountains. The rulers, House Aaron, like to use a lot of falcon imagery to describe themselves. Their house words are as high as honor. The second most powerful family, House Royce, who were the Bronze Kings long before the Aarons ruled the Vale, have a much more simpler but more impactful house words. We remember. The Royces have this cool ancestral set of armor passed down the family line with supposed magical properties. There's ancient ruins on it that are believed to protect the wearer. We don't hear about magic at all in the Vale, and I think this is the only mention of ruins in the entire story. Maybe that's what they remember. The Riverlands are the only kingdom with nothing for me to add. The Tully family are the Liege Lords here, so I gotta mention their house words. Family, duty, honor. They don't really deserve a better one, however. The five other mentioned ones, for House Malister, Moon, Piper, Smallwood, and Woad, aren't much better. On to the outcasts of the Seven Kingdoms, the Iron Islands. They did it to themselves, though, being annoying pillagers plundering other locations. The Greyjoy's house words says it all, we do not sow. They don't plant or harvest. Not like they could do much of it if they wanted to anyways. Their land sucks. Garbage, stony soil. It's the Iron Islands, not the Fertile Islands. The only other house words I can find in this kingdom come from House Cod. Though all men do despise us. That's their actual house words. I got a good laugh out of that one. Things are so wild here, if we get any more, I'm sure they'll be just as funny. Since not a lot going on in the Iron Islands, I think it's time to move on to the Reach. Going from two house words to 13. The Reach is all about fertile land and chivalry. The ruling family in this kingdom, the Tyrells, have house words that I find ominous. Growing strong. For the first time since the Targaryens elevated them to this status, they've become ambitious. When in the past, they tried their best not to be on anyone's radar. And they have grown very strong as of late, in wealth, harvests, and soldiers. The second most powerful family in the Reach, House Hightower, are more about the city life instead of open fields. They are real proud of that lighthouse of theirs. Their house words are, we light the way. The Tarleys, heavy into martial culture because there's been ongoing wars between the Reach and Dorne for thousands of years. Being by the border, the Tarleys were always involved. Their house words are first in battle. House Okar carries on the theme of chivalry and agriculture with their house words, our roots go deep. And if their claims are true, they descend from John the Oak, whose father was the first man on Westeros who introduced farming to this land. Here's the remaining nine. I feel like 9 times out of 10, if you ask a fan of either the books or the shows what the Lannister's house words are, they're gonna say a Lannister always pays his debts. As nice and memorable as that phrase is, it ain't it. The Lannisters are a very ancient house, as old as the Starks. Their house words represent that. Hear me roar. Primitive stuff relating to all their lion imagery. There's some deep lore about lions. As rare as these species are in the current Westerlands, some are kept in cages within the Lannisters' home, Castle Rock. The Lannisters owe everything they have to their location, a massive gold mine. Well, this wasn't originally theirs. 
Thousands of years back, they took it from the Casterlies through some kind of trickery that characters can only speculate on. One rumor is releasing lions onto the Casterly family, freeing up the gold mine. After all these years, Hear Me Roar never stuck like winter is coming. Oh, that's memorable. House Westerling, an old family that used to have good relations with the Lannisters, represent everything that the Lannisters aren't. Honorable, but far from wealthy. Their house words are honor, not honors. Things have gotten a little messy with them in the books because Jane Westerling, a young daughter of the present lord, married Rob Stark. And Rob married her instead of a fray girl because of honor, costing him his life and the war. Jane Westerling is still alive in the books and still fiercely loyal and in love with Rob. Very different than what we see in Game of Thrones. Some characters are worried she's carrying his heir, but I think that's unlikely. The book's storyline's already growing unruly as it is, without Jane and a baby complicating things. The Grey Calls are the Westerland's historic tough guys. None so fierce fits their house well. House Farman, off the coast here, is all about sailing. Their house words are the wind or steed. This might be the most recent addition to the story, because I got it from the lore book Fire and Blood, a recent publication. All others are from the main book series or the World of Ice and Fire book that came out that's like 10 years old now. Not sure what's going on with House Swift, but their seat's called Cornfield. There's a big rooster on their sigil, and their house words are awake, awake. And here's the rest. We haven't spent a whole lot of time in Dorne in the books, and that's kind of reflected on the lackluster list of house words. We only get six here to end things off. House Dane hasn't got one yet, but they will. They have to at this point, after being so involved in the past and present. The two powerful families that the Martells heavily depend on to defend this kingdom from invasions are the Ironwoods and Fowlers. The Ironwoods' words are we guard the way, for obvious reasons. The Fowlers got let me soar. Their castle, high above, near the mountains here, overlooked the passage to the Reach. Somehow, House Illyrion and House Jordain got some words. Powerful lords, yes, but not all that relevant. The Martell's famous house words are unbowed, unbent, unbroken. The Martells weren't much of a big deal a few thousand years back. They were actually just vassals of other neighboring kings. Then a race of warrior women sailed to Westeros and teamed up with the Martells. These women, led by the Princess Nymeria, made the Martells what they are today. They survived the worst of the worst this nightmare world has to offer, including an invasion by dragonlords and viruses. This mentality of unbowed, unbent, unbroken stuck around even for Aegon's conquest 300 years ago. No other family resisted Targaryen rule the way the Martells did. Their message of unbowed, unbent, unbroken spread to all the other families in Dorne, making them a stubborn kingdom to bring into the Targaryen's realm. They would rather all die and watch their castles filled with fire and blood than to bend the knee. Passionate stuff that you see personified in Oberyn Martell. I like this character so much that I found another way to talk about him. That's a sign I gotta stop blabbing. So thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you later.